Hello everyone and welcome back to another Watch Reaper video. My name is Hector and today I want to show you this Orient. It's an EM caliber and uh, as you can see right away the day wheel is not aligning with the date wheel on the three position. So that's the first problem we find right here on this watch. So as you can see the day wheel is not aligning. So look Monday not aligning with the 31st look at that it's completely out of place so something is going on inside on the day wheel and we're gonna disassemble and we're gonna do a quick inspection to see what's going on also when i move it because uh this watch you can now wind it manually so you need to actually uh shake it a little bit to get the oscillating weight move around but when i do that i feel like a super weird noise so we're gonna take the back lid out and see what's going on here so I'm gonna actually use a piece of paper and uh, carefully I'm gonna use my tweezers I don't want to make any squashes and remove the back lid there we go All right. So the first thing I want to show you here, guys, let me zoom it in, are these scratches on the movement. I want to point at them. This is the first one here, big scratch. And there is another one um, on the oscillating weight. And this is, you know, due to sleeping screwdrivers, and this can happen to anybody, uh, honestly. So it's, you know, uh, it, it happens. We just have to make sure we're using the correct screwdriver. Uh, we have to select the appropriate size for the appropriate screw. So when I move the oxidating weight, something I notice is that it's misplaced. Um, so I'm going to show you on angle here so you can understand what I mean by misplaced. Let me put it on angle. Okay, so here with the screw holding it on the center, you can see a huge gap. And on the other end, you can actually see that the oscillating weight is touching the movement. So this is due to uh, misplaced, so it's an easy uh, and quick fix. Basically, the only thing we have to do here is to unscrew it and place it correctly. It has like a uh, couple notches that you have to align and then you screw it back together and it should work perfectly fine. Hopefully. So what I'm going to do really quick it's to make sure my theory works so i'm going to unscrew it really quick and there we go that was a super i'm gonna tighten it a little bit more careful when you're tightening screws because we don't want to deal with a broken screw in a movement that's that's not good okay so i'm going to show you again and you're going to see a perfect parallel line between the oscillating weight and the movement itself okay now it's rotating the way it is supposed to it's freely rotating the way it is supposed to so let me put it on angle so you can see better Okay, so zoom it in. There you go. Perfect parallel lines between the oscillating weight and the movement. So we don't have the huge gap on the center and then on the other end, uh, the oxidating weight touching the movement. No, it's a perfect parallel line and that's what we want. All right. But uh, even though we got the oscillating weight working, 
uh, the balance is not moving. So we're gonna actually take it out. We're gonna take the oxidating weight, and we're gonna do a full further inspection on the movement because there is something going on with this balance and this movement. I'm gonna use my screwdriver to lift it here carefully and a pair of tweezers. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my puffer and I'm gonna blow some air. I'm gonna use the puffer to put some air there to see if the balance kicks on and starts moving. And definitely it moved for maybe a second and it stops again. So that is something going on. So we're gonna take the balance. Oh, actually, we're going to manually wind the watch using this screw right here. This screw is on top of the ratchet wheel. And we can manually do it. I'm using my puffer again. Now just moves for the second and it stops again. All right, so inspecting it on the microscope, we can see that the hair spring is completely messed up. You can see that uh, you can look at the regulator and actually it's the hair spring is out of the regulator as well. It's all bent and multiple loops are overlapping. So this hair spring is the cause why the balance is not moving. So we have a faulty hair spring. This hair spring can be fixed, but it takes uh, time. It takes, at least for me, it takes a lot of hours. So we're going to take the movement out of the uh, case by taking this plastic ring first. And then we're going to take the crown and stem out. To do that, we have to pull the crown to the setting position. And then we're going to use a piece of paywood to push on a particular spot and take the stem out of the movement. And that way we can take it out of the case. And that's going to be right there. Pushing and pulling. It's a push-pull action. All right, so taking the movement out. Another thing we have to deal with is hands. So we're going to use a piece of plastic film to put on top of the hands and we're going to use the hands levels to extract the hands. Careful with the hands because they are very delicate. So I'm not even touching them. I'm just dropping them inside this container. I don't want to touch them with my hands. I handle uh, the hands, try to handle hands with Rodico when I have to. Okay, so now we are going to take the um, dial out and there are two screws. We have to just do a quick turn. You don't have to unscrew the entire screw. Just do a 90 degree or 180 degree and, and that's going to be enough for you to take the dial out of the movement. So that's what we're doing right now using a screwdriver to gently lift. You don't want to just push on one side of the dial, you want to do it on both sides uh, because we can easily bend dials and, and cause trouble here. So I'm actually doing it on both sides and the dial should come out easily. There we go. Okay. So with the dial out, now we have to take the day wheel out as well. And I'm going to show you the day, uh, the day wheel is held in place by a washer, but it's super springy. So I'm using a piece of radical to put it on top of the hour wheel so it doesn't jump and fly across the room. So that's, that's the least thing I want here, uh, a flying piece. I honestly hate when something fly off and then I have to spend... Uh, minutes or maybe hours trying to find the missing piece. So, Rodico is a good friend for this. Okay, so we're going to take that washer out. And then with Rodico, we're going to take the day wheel out of the movement. So, what is going on with this day wheel is that the actual teeth 
on the back of the day wheel are moving, are sliding on that wheel. So we're going to use a staking tool to press uh, those teeth, teeth against the uh, day wheel. So we're going to use the staking to actually hammer them a little bit so they don't slide. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're doing this, you need to consider that by uh, hammering on the, and I'm saying hammering, it sounds like super strong, but it's just uh, a light touch, a light tapping. So it's not like actually <laughs> like hammering with, with a 20 pounds hammer, it's just light taps on top. And that's it. Uh, but by doing so, you are going to reduce the opening. You are going to reduce the hole on the center of the day wheel. So then you're going to need a round file that is like more like a polishing file, not aggressive, to actually resize that hole again. Otherwise, it won't fit on top of the hour wheel. So be mindful if you are trying to do something like this. Honestly, this is a solution I came up with, but I don't know if that's the best solution. So maybe some guys out there knows and you can, uh, you know, post here and, and tell me what is your approach for this situation. Now we're going to take the balance cock out and that way we can take the balance wheel out and we can do a further inspection on the balance spring. We can fix the balance spring, but I was doing a search on eBay and the, hers, the actual balance complete cost $3. So it's just, you know, money versus time. $3 is nothing in comparison to hours of dealing with uh, uh, hair spring. So I'm actually, uh, actually I order the part and I will show you the part in a minute. So we're taking the balance cock out and prying out here. I'm going to take a smaller screwdriver to try to get it out. Careful here because by doing this, uh, the balance staff pivots can get easily broken, can be broken, we can break them easily. They are strong, I mean, they are uh, hard and brittle. So, we gotta be careful here. Okay, so, with the balance out, something wanna make sure is that the train of wheels and the mainspring are working perfectly fine. So, we're gonna accomplish that by using a piece of paywood and we're gonna touch both sides of the pallet fork horns and just by slightly touching them the pallet fork should move to the opposite side of the banking pin so I'm gonna do a slight touch on one side and it should go to the opposite side quickly <clears throat> like this and then I'm gonna touch the other side and it should go to the opposite there we go so in doing this we make sure we don't have any trouble on the main spring train of wheel or escape wheel so now we're going to take our balance complete and put it under the microscope and inspect the hair spring so there we go you can see the multiple loops are overlapping and also towards the end where the stud is we can see that the hair spring is completely messed up so i ordered this one from ebay it cost uh, three dollars and some cents so i just went for that option instead of spending hours trying to to fix the hair spring and it's something that requires a lot of time patient training and uh, a quick solution can be this of course for this movement that a balance complete can be purchased for a very reasonable price for some other movements a balance complete might be super pricey and then of course we won't have any other option but fixing the actual faulty hairspray but for now we can buy it and install it so i'm gonna do this under microscope and i'm gonna do this on speed mode so i'm gonna speed the video a little bit
All right, there we go. Now what we're going to do is we're going to place it on top of the movement. Place it in the movement. We want to make sure it, uh, it goes in the right position. So we want to make sure the pivots go in the appropriate jewels. It, it takes a little bit of time, but we're going to get here. Now I'm going to use a piece of pay wood, which is a lot softer than metal, to accommodate and do any adjustments here. Alright, and I think it already started moving, so you're going to see it in just a moment. All right, there you go. Another thing I'm going to do here is to take the balance jewels out. So let me show you first. Let me show you first the balance moving. There you go. So definitely the hair spring was the reason why this moving was not working. So, that's one problem out of the plate. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is take the balance jewels out and clean them and oil them again. So, uh, I like anytime I work on a balance and I have to take the balance out, I like to oil, uh, to clean and oil the balance jewels because, you know, dust and and dirt can get into uh, those little openings and then we're gonna have a problem with the amplitude so it's a lot better to clean them oil them and then in that way we we can prevent a low amplitude okay so we're actually going to Do a quick adjustment here. Okie dokie. Look at that balance. Beautifully moving there. Rocking back and forth. Already. So the next thing we're going to do here is put the day wheel. Mount the day wheel. We use a piece of Rodico and we're going to Put the washer put in some oil and the washer using tweezers and it's a an easy an easy part to do. Alright, so now we're gonna mount the dial. So I already did it. Same way we took it how we put it in, so it's no big secrets here. And now we're gonna put the hands. Now for the hands, something you wanna do, you wanna pull the crown and stem out to the setting position and you want to start turning it until the date changes in this case from 14 to 15 now when it starts moving when that 14 number starts moving we want to go super slow because we want to set the watch on the 12 o'clock position if we keep turning it in then it won't be on the 12th position anymore and it would be very hard to accurately place the the hands okay so now it's changing so i'm doing it super slow super slow until i see that 15 jumping place right there okay now we're gonna take the hour wheel i use a piece of radico to help me in this process i don't like touching the hands with my hands oh that's funny Touching the hands with my hands. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's funny. Right there. Okay. So we are going to use the hands pushers. Uh, the hands should be in a perfect parallel line with the dials. So what I'm going to do here is actually turn uh, the hand again. Making sure 
it changes from 15 to 16 exactly on the 12th position because remember we are setting it to 12 o'clock so there we go so let's see this is the moments of truth and boom right there now we're gonna use the minute hand and we're not gonna we're gonna put it on the 12th position as well because we set the watch for 12 o'clock use a piece of paper something really soft to accommodate uh, the hands because if you use screwdrivers or tweezers you run the risk of scratching the dial and, and a scratch dial doesn't look pretty at all okay so once you accommodate it on the on the place you like use the hand pushers and push it into place remember there should be a clearance between the hour hand and the dial and then a clearance between the minute hand and the hour hand and they should be in a perfect parallel line and then we're gonna put the second hand and again it should be a perfect uh, parallel line and clearance between the second hand and the minute hand so I, I have a little bit of trouble here placing the second hand so what I'm gonna do actually is take all these under the microscope and do it under the microscope for me it works a lot better so I'm actually working here with my phone in between my face and the actual the actual dial so it, you can imagine how hard it is sometimes I'm just doing things by looking on the phone and it's not the same so now we got that it's just dropping it inside the case putting the plastic ring the same way we took it out we put it in we put the oscillating weight making sure the notches align perfectly and we put the screw we're going to screw into place and we're going to take it to the timer grapher so this is the moment of truth this is a moment we want to regular re regulate our watch Although, let me tell you this, once you service a watch, uh, you want to wait for a good 24 to 48 hours before you do any kind of regulation. Remember, adjustments and regulations are not the same. So, when, when we say regulating a watch, we mean actually, uh, we want to look at the, at the rate, how fast or how slow it runs per day. So, right here on the, re on the time grapher, we're gonna do quick regulation and I'm gonna show you how this movement is running so it's running at positive two seconds a day with an amplitude of 264 degrees which is awesome and a bit error of 0 0.1 milliseconds which is more than good anything for bit error anything below 0.6 is excellent an amplitude anything uh, over 220 is excellent as well so we're looking at a great amplitude we're looking at a great bit error actually the bit error here right now is 0, 0.0 the amplitude it's 256 and the rate is positive two seconds a day which is very decent it's pretty good actually it went to zero seconds a day so this is great oh now we're gonna use some silicone grease to dress the gasket before placing it uh, on the case and then we're gonna close our movement right there Okay, using this wrench to tighten it don't go crazy tightening it tightening it because um, you know it can slip and you you can end up having horrendous scratches on the back so tighten it but uh, don't go crazy here because the least thing we want here is a big scratch on the back all right now we're gonna test it taking the crown out to the setting position making sure we can move the hands the hands are properly aligned making sure also that the day will changes and the date will changes as well 
both of them should change and should be perfectly aligned because we corrected the issue on the day wheel. All right, so you can see that it's changing beautifully. The day wheel is moving and it's perfectly aligned. That's what we want. Okie dokie, so what we're gonna do now is throw in some leather straps. Um, so I, I didn't want to go with the stainless steel bracelet that originally comes with it. So instead I decided to purchase uh, black leather straps and I think it matches beautifully with this watch. I'm gonna show you just in a moment. This comes with the tools and the spring bars, which is a plus. So we're going to throw in those black straps. Okay, I'm going to show you how it looks, just in a second. Let me get the straps out. I want you to look how they look with the inner bezel. Well, it, well, it's not an inner bezel. It's more like a second ring on the crystal. But that's uh, in black as well. So it matches beautifully the, mm, the strap and the second ring on the crystal match beautifully. I think it, it gives a perfect touch. The leather strap gives a perfect touch to this watch. So put in the spring bar. So I'm going to speed the process here really quick. I'm going to put one. Using the spring bar tool to push in and put in place I think that we got it there we go now we're gonna put on the other one Okay, now I'm now gonna actually put in the watch so you can see the final result. All right, there we go. Okay, look at the way it looks. I think it looks very nice. Let me actually correct something here. I want you to take a look. Look at that. It is a beautiful dress watch that you can wear with long sleeves shirts. All right. I think it's a perfect match. That black uh, leather strap matches beautifully with the second ring on the crystal. It looks beautifully. All right, so that's all for now. Thank you for watching, guys. If you like the video, please give us a thumb up, subscribe, and share. See you on the next one.